So, in my last uh, bike packing video, I went through my bike packing bags and my camping gear, uh, at least for the summer. And in that video, I briefly mentioned that there are a couple of cheaper alternatives to the camping gear I was using. So I talked to my mate, Dara the Magnificent, who's been using a couple of those cheaper alternatives uh, for the last couple of uh, bikepacking trips we've done. I thought I will combine those uh, with a few pieces I have myself and put together a nice, cheap, light and compact bikepacking camping set. And I will compare them to the bit more expensive alternatives, at least when it comes to tent and sleeping pad, and see where the difference are and if it's worth the compromise. And as a bonus, I will also talk about this new cooking pot I got, which I will probably use from here on out. And combining this with my cheap stove, this will be a very budget-friendly cooking kit. But enough of the introduction, let's jump over to the two different camping setups. One budget and one reference setup. So our budget kit is made up of a nature hike one man two layer tent, a nature hike sleeping pad and an Aegis Max sleeping bag. Totaling in at around 220 bucks. The reference kit is a two man two layer tent from Big Agnes. Important to note that the footprint is not included with the tent. The sleeping pad is from Sea to Summit and the sleeping bag is from the Japanese brand Isuka. And this is totaling in at around 710 bucks. So looking at the tents, our budget tent, like I said, is from Nature Hike and the model is Cloud Up. One. You can find this tent for around 90 bucks on Amazon and it's a two layer semi freestanding tent which means you have an inner tent and an outer rain fly and you can assemble the tent and move it around without staking it down but to get the full uh, volume inside the tent you need to stake out at least the bottom corners. It is basically a copy of the Big Agnes Fly Creek series but unlike Big Agnes you actually get the footprint or the ground sheet uh, included with the tent. Speaking of the Fly Creek series, our reference tent is the Big Agnes Fly Creek UL2 EX. The EX model is a Japanese only model from what I understand and it's basically the inner tent does not have the see-through mesh for some reason. As you can see the setup process is pretty much the same for both tents. Remember though that the Big Agnes tent is a two-man tent and the Nature Hike is only one man so there will be some slight variations for sure. I do think though that you can definitely definitely feel the difference in material between the tents. Big Agnes definitely feels a bit more premium. It just fits a little bit better at every corner etc. Still the nature hike is it's not bad in any way. Taking a look inside the nature hike tent. Here you can see it's definitely a one man tent. You can't fit two people here unless you want to lie on top of each other. You can still sit up at the front of the tent without hitting your head too much. It tapers down towards the feet. I am 184 centimeters tall and I can lie in here without feeling too cramped. If you're much taller than me though, it could be an issue. As for pockets inside the tent, you only have one above the door. And the door of the inner tent is a single layer mesh door with a dual ended zipper so you can open it from both both above and below. The space between the inner door and the outer door also known as the vestibule has a pretty good amount of space for storage of your bike packing bags, helmets, shoes and stuff like that. Comparing it to the Big Agnes tent the Big Agnes is obviously a two-man tent so it's not quite apples to apples comparison uh, you have a lot more space, but even that said, if you want to sleep two people in here, it's going to be a tight fit. So it probably helps if this is a person you really like. Like the nature hike, we have a pockets above the inner door. And we also have two pockets on each side of the door, which are missing in the nature hike one. The inner door is actually a two layer one. So you have a non see-through inner one and a, and a mesh outer layer. And you can open both layers with one zipper or split them up as well. The vestibule is about the same size apart from the, the width uh, as this is a two man tent. The good thing about sleeping one person in this tent though, is you have a lot of space inside the actual tent for storage of bags etc. 
Moving on to the nerdy part, let's check the weights. And as you can see, even though the nature hike is a one-man tent and the Big Agnes is a two-man tent, the nature hike tent is basically a bit heavier on every single part of the tent, with the biggest difference coming on the rainfly, which is almost 200 grams heavier, and you can definitely feel that in the material. The footprint or ground sheet is also optional. It will provide a bit more protection, but if you really want to go lightweight, you could leave this at home. So all these 50 grams here and 100 grams there all adds up. So in terms of total pack weight, these two tents will differ a about 500 grams. In my opinion, even more important than the actual weight is the pack size. And as you can see, while the nature hike has a bit more volume on each part, except the poles, which are one or two centimeters shorter, these are very comparable in terms of pack size. And while 500 grams is nothing to ignore, uh, keeping in mind the prices of these two tents, the nature hike is basically one fourth or at least one third the price of the Big Agnes. It's a compromise that definitely has some merit. And the way I pack my tents, I can fit both the inner tent, the rainfly and the footprint inside this compression sack without much problem. This compression sack I put in my handlebar bag together with the sleeping pad and this is the same way I pack my big Agnes setup. So all in all, this tent won't take up any more space than my more expensive setup does. And that's the main reason I think this is a very good budget alternative as the packing size is probably one of the more important aspects of bikepacking gear. One part of the nature hike tent that it's definitely not really up to standard is the stakes, which looks very nice, but they got damaged pretty quickly and my mate already got some new ones to replace them. The tent also shows a bit of wear here and there, but nothing too crazy. Moving on to the sleeping pad. The budget alternative is also from Nature Hike. It's a $50 sleeping pad. The model name is, is different depending on where you look it up, but I will drop the links in the description. The weight is actually lighter than my Sea to Summit Ultra Light medium sized sleeping pad and that's 100 bucks so half the price for lightweight it's about the same size packed uh, if you manage to get all the air out uh, the stuff sacks though it's twice the size for some reason not that i use the stuff sacks on my trips so it doesn't really matter the sleeping pad is a 187 centimeters long and it's not insulated so it's definitely a summer spring fall sleeping pad nothing you would use in the winter and it's pretty easy to get air in it. It takes about 30 seconds to fill it up. It's harder though to get all the air out. So when you roll it up, you might have to roll it up a few times to get it as compact as you want. The C to Summit pad in comparison feels like it takes a bit more air to get it fully inflated, but still around 30-40 seconds shouldn't take more time than that. I will say that it feels a bit more comfortable to sleep on than a nature hike. The biggest advantage of the C to Summit bag though, it's the deflating is super simple. You basically just open the deflate valve and roll it up and that's it. The nature hike on the other hand requires a bit more effort to get all the air out, especially from the from the bottom air pockets. The sleeping bag is from another brand called Aegis Max Ultralight Goose Down Sleeping Bag size large and you can find this for about 80 bucks. I won't compare this to my Isuka bag because I don't actually use that bag. I always use this bag because it's yeah it's this light 568 grams and it's super compact once you uh, compress it down. As you can see here, when I really work it down into my seat pack, it will not take up more than half the pack. It takes a bit of effort to get it down, but definitely worth it. My Isuka bag on the other hand is probably a bit warmer, it takes up a bit more space and it's probably around 100 grams heavier as well. So it's actually not something I've used out on a trip yet because I can use this bag. I used it down to plus, I think it was plus five degrees at its coldest. And then I just had a super light uh, down vest on me and I used my uh, leg warmers to get a bit of an extra insulation. And I had no problem uh, camping out in that kind of temperature. 
As you can see, the official comfort rating is 11 degrees Celsius, lower limit is plus 6, and extreme is minus 9, but I would definitely not use this in minus degrees weather, unless I had some serious extra layers with me. But I would probably rather look at another sleeping bag if I knew we were going down to those temperatures. Moving on to the cooking kit then, I've showed this in my last video. This is the BRS3000T titanium stove and this is so small and so light and so cheap. You can't really find anything smaller, cheaper or lighter. So I actually don't have a reference to compare it to. In other words, this would probably be the reference for anything else I would pick up eventually. I don't know though. If you really want to nitpick, I guess you could say that there's no built-in uh, lighter function. But yeah, that's about it in terms of negatives. 26 gram for 15 bucks in this size. It's yeah, just stupid. Another thing you can pick up for 15 bucks is this cook set from Stanley, stainless steel. And uh, I heard you could even find this in like Walmart and stuff like that in the States. Really nice construction with a locking handle that keeps the lid in place. And you get two nesting cups when you buy this. It's nothing I will use out on the bike though. So I will just put these aside. The lid has this plastic flap or handle uh, that you can actually take off and put a ring or something instead comes in at 216 grams which it's not super light maybe you can probably find some titanium pots that's lighter but then you're in another price bracket so what i do is take my uh, gas canister and put it upside down inside a cup then i have enough space for all the other parts like the stove the, the lighter and a small sponge then you have to fill it up with a rag or something to keep it from rattling inside only thing you need to think about don't press the canister too far down because it could be hard to get it out one way to keep this from happening is to put the rag underneath the canister as well so as long as you use a gas canister stove with this, you probably have nothing to worry about. But if you plan on using this over an open fire, for example, you might need to switch out this plastic uh, little flap for a key ring or something like that. Because I, I've heard on other uh, videos that this can actually melt if you have it on an open fire. So be aware of that. So all in all, I think this budget uh, camping kit is a pretty good solution if you're just looking to get into bikepacking and are not 100% sure if you're gonna stick with it or not. You might not want to fork out like seven, eight hundred bucks just to try it out. And if you're like me, only do these kind of trips on weekends, maybe a few times per year max. Uh, it could also be a good solution if you don't really want to fork out that big cash. But if you're planning on doing longer trips, like month long trips or something like that, I would probably go and spend a few more dollars on the, the nicer stuff. But I leave that decision up to you. And of course, there's a lot of other brands and other lightweight solutions out there. This video didn't cover bivvies or uh, hammocks and whatnot. I'm just covering stuff I have experience with myself. But if you have any suggestions, or stuff you try that you're very happy with or not happy with, feel free to inform me and other viewers as well in the comments. Otherwise, I hope you found this interesting and maybe you can use it as a reference to build your own camping kit. And if you want to buy something, I will drop links for everything down in the description. I think that's it for this bikepacking video. If you have any other suggestions of videos regarding bikepacking, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you found this interesting or helpful, leave a like and subscribe if you feel like it. Always appreciate it and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.